Through Project Up, Comcast is working to help build a future of unlimited possibilities. From connecting people to the Internet to opening doors for the next generation of innovators, entrepreneurs, and storytellers, they are helping to create a future that benefits generations to come. Comcast is committing $1 billion to reach tens of millions of people with the skills, resources, and opportunities they need to succeed in a digital world. Project Up, building a future of unlimited possibilities. Learn more at Comcast.com slash Project Up. Now I want to tell you about a podcast that can help you sleep. Created by a dad who couldn't find any sounds that would play long enough to last through a whole night of his baby sleeping, 12-Hour Sound Machines has episodes that mask outside noises, promote deep restful sleep for yourself and for your baby, and that help slow down your brain, reduce anxiety, and aid in thoughtful meditation. Join the millions of listeners that tune in every week to zone out the increasingly busy, distracting world around them. Just search for 12-Hour Sound Machines wherever you get your podcasts. It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Living Daily, episode 2771, Stuff your biggest time thief, and how to steal back your time by Emma Scheib of simpleslowlovely.com. And I'm Justin Mollick. Happy Monday. Welcome back to Optimal Living Daily or the OLD podcast, where I read to you from some of the best blogs I can find and get permission from. And we're gonna get right to our Minimalist Monday posts as we optimize your life. Stuff, your biggest time thief and how to steal back your time by Emma Scheib of simpleslowlovely.com. Your biggest time thief is the stuff you own. Time is humanity's most precious commodity. Everyone has time. We've all been gifted the same amount of time, 24 hours in a day, 168 hours in a week, 730 hours in a month, and so on. And yet so many of us constantly complain that we just don't have enough of it. Could we just have a few more hours in each day, please? I've been on this treadmill for a long time, and yes, it's true, the older you get, the quicker time seems to go. Why? Because the older we get, the more we become a slave to time. Time, and ultimately our stuff, our belongings, own us. Let me explain. Most of us spend our days neatly split into thirds. We spend approximately eight hours sleeping, about eight hours working, and then we have another eight hours to do what we please. If you think about it like that, it seems like a lot of time to spare. But for many people, life is not split so neatly like this. Their jobs require longer hours, perhaps up to 10 hours per day, and a commute of perhaps another two hours a day. All of a sudden, that spare eight hours is down to around four to five hours. Then there are the life incidentals, the bits you just have to do. For those of us with families, this right here pretty much sucks up what's left. Cooking, cleaning, organizing, and managing our stuff thieves away another huge chunk of our day. So at the end of our day, there's not much time left. No time to stop and sit in the garden. No time to take a leisurely walk on the beach. No time to watch that movie we've been hanging out to see. No time to spend with a friend we haven't seen in months. No bloody time. And while the sci fi fan in me loves to entertain the idea of a time machine, This is 99.99% unlikely to ever become reality. So whatever it is that we wish we had a time machine for, we'd better think of some other options, some other ways of stealing our time back. Take a moment to think about your biggest time thief. For most of us, it's work. Why do we do it? Again, for most of us, we have rent and mortgages to pay and things to buy to fill these homes. Take your average American household, which boasts an average number of 300,000 items in each home. You can guarantee that a large portion of these items are unused. But what if we decided to do something radical? What if we decided we didn't have to work so hard to pay for all the things we quote unquote need to buy? What if we made the radical but simple decision to just stop buying stuff? Would we need to work as much? What if we minimized our belongings, got rid of the excess, the unneeded, the unwanted things that clutter our houses? Will we still need that five-bedroom house with double garaging that we work 50-plus hours a week to maintain? Or could we downsize our house, our mortgage, and steal back some of our precious time? It's radical. It's not the bread and butter most of us grew up on. 
My generation has been raised by a generation that has accepted the consumer-driven norms that run our world. It's normal to go to work 40 plus hours a week, even to a job you hate. It's normal to be mortgaged to the eyeballs, run a couple of credit cards, and buy that new television you really want and absolutely can't wait for. Stuff is ruthless. It will crush you. And so these things, these belongings we purchase, this stuff, it steals our time. It's ruthless and will eventually crush us. Our sleep suffers as we start to make deals with the clock. I'll stay up a little later tonight to work a little bit more because I really need that new coffee machine to help me wake up in the morning. Not a huge amount of sense in that way of thinking, but yet, that's the kind of thinking that drives us. I see glimmers of hope to change this nonsensical consumer-driven cycle. I'm hopeful now for a change for my children's generation, for lives that aren't filled with stuff and time that isn't stolen by stuff. My change started a few months ago when I decided to trade my weekly wage to steal back time. I stole back time to spend with my kids, time to sit on the deck and watch the birds in the trees, time to leisurely walk the dog on the beach, time to write. If your stuff is stealing your time too, maybe there's a way you can steal it back. My change was radical. I'm not advocating anyone go quit their job. And yes, sometimes it's a pain at the end of the pay week having to figure out how to buy the next bottle of milk. But after two months of slowly regaining my precious time, I wouldn't give anything to allow it to be stolen again. Not new clothes or shoes or that coffee machine I really want. I'd just rather have my previous time. Here are five ideas for stealing some time back. Number one, choose secondhand clothes. They cost a fraction of the price of new clothes. What if you found your new winter jacket for $15 instead of $200? Time saved, 11 hours based on New Zealand's minimum wage. Number two, swap your daily takeaway coffee for a homemade version. Time saved, two hours. Number three, set aside a weekend to go through your unwanted items and hold a garage sale or sell items online. A UK study has estimated that each UK home has $3,500 worth of unused items in it. Potential time saved, 206 hours, allowing 16 hours to declutter and sell items. Number four, revamp your food shopping. Eat local seasonal food. Shop at your local market or butcher. You get fresher food and you could conservatively save up to $30 off your food budget per week. Time saved, two hours. And number five, make friends with your local library. I'm preaching to myself here. I love my books and this is the last thing I ever declutter. I also love to own good books that I know I'll reread and lend out. But if you typically buy a book or two a month at full price, time saved up to four hours. Choose to do something today to steal back your time. You'll never get today back. You'll never get more time unless you think creatively, radically. Choose time over stuff and be prepared to reap the rewards. You just listened to the post titled Stuff, Your Biggest Time Thief and How to Steal Back Your Time by Emma Scheib of simpleslowlovely.com. So you open Google Chrome on your phone, you're hunting for a super rare first edition vinyl of a band you're obsessed with when you're supposed to be working. But this site you tapped on seems pretty shady. And Daryl from IT just jumped up from his desk. Oh no, he's coming your way. It's a good thing built-in malware protection keeps you safe and sound. Not from Daryl though, sorry. There's no place like Chrome. Download Google Chrome on your phone. Support for this podcast comes from Delmarva Power. Now you can make saving money part of your business with Delmarva Power's Energy Savings for Business program. Designed to fit every type of business, the program offers financial incentives that can cover up to 50% of the cost to upgrade to energy-efficient lighting, HVAC, and more. By using more efficient equipment, your business will save money every month on your electric bill for years to come. Learn more at delmarva.com slash power savings. Thank you to Emma. This one took me back to a book that I read in college, although I heard that back then, some high schools had it as required reading, which I thought was really cool because it's a very unique book with a stance that was a bit radical for its time. 
The book is called Ishmael, and it's basically a discussion about two ways of living, taking, 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 or leaving, and the implications of both. It's been a long time since I've reread the book, but from what I remember, it wasn't necessarily about minimalism per se, because minimalism wasn't really a thing back then, but the ideas in the book, to me at least, were the start of this sort of thinking and the conversation around minimalism. So if you'd like to dive more into the mindset of this and deeper, you might like that book. Again, it's called Ishmael. Maybe get it from the library as this author suggested. But this post also reminded me of another book, one I read probably a few years after that when I was in grad school, and this one was required reading, but ended up becoming one of my favorite books. It's called Your Money or Your Life, and really drives home this idea of hours saved in your life instead of money saved. So if you want the money side of this argument in more detail in what I think is a pretty easy to read book, that's another one I recommend. Or you can check out our podcast narrating articles about money. That's the podcast Optimal Finance Daily. But I'll leave it there for today. Thank you for being here and minimizing with me. Hope your week is off to a great start and I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.